Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Americans had enough after Stevie Wonder took the stage and attacked Trump. What is it with leftists using funerals to attack President Trump all of a sudden? This time it was the singer Stevie Wonder, who hasn't had a hit since the 80s, who used his performance at Aretha Franklin's funeral to try and take a veiled swipe at President Donald Trump. By saying what needs to happen today, not only in this nation, but throughout the world, is that we need to make love great again, Wonder said, playing off Trump's campaign slogan Make America Great Again. Huh? Now the best part about this scholar's comments is that Breitbart reported that only last week the man floated out a theory that Aretha Franklin's cancer and death was a result of none other than global warming. I just feel that all these various diseases that we have and all these things that are happening in the world in part is because there are those who don't believe in global warming, don't believe that what we do affects the world, he told CBS this morning. What we eat affects the world. Wonder was not the only person to disparage the Trump presidency during the service, which took place in Franklin's hometown of Detroit. Rev. Al Sharpton used his eulogy to warn Trump over his supposed lack of respect. You know, the other Sunday on my show I misspelled respect, Sharpton said. And a lot of you all corrected me. Now I want you all to help me correct President Trump to teach him what it means. And I say that because when word went out that Ms. Franklin passed, Trump said, she used to work for me. No. She used to perform for you. She worked for us. Aretha never took orders from nobody but God. Here is more on Aretha Franklin's funeral via The Hollywood Reporter. Former presidents and preachers joined a parade of pop stars Friday in a singing, hip-swaying, piano-pounding farewell to Aretha Franklin, remembering the Queen of Soul as a powerful force for musical and political change and a steadfast friend. In a send-off both grand and personal, an all-star lineup of mourners filled the same Detroit church that hosted Rosa Parks' funeral and offered prayers, songs and dozens of tributes. Guests included former President Bill Clinton, former First Lady Hillary Clinton, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, Stevie Wonder, and Smokey Robinson. Advertisement, story continues below. Robinson, the Motown great, remembered first hearing Franklin play piano when he was just eight and remained close to her for the rest of her life, talking for hours at a time. You're so special, he said, before crooning a few lines from his song Really Gonna Miss You, with the line Really Gonna Be Different Without You. Bill Clinton described himself as an Aretha Franklin groupie whom he had loved since college days. He traced her life's journey, praising her as someone who lived with courage, not without fear, but overcoming her fears. He remembered attending her last public performance, at Elton John's AIDS Foundation benefit in November in New York. She looked desperately ill but managed to greet him by standing and saying, how you doing, baby?" Clinton ended by noting that her career spanned from vinyl records to cell phones. He held the microphone near his iPhone and played a snippet of Franklin's classic Think, the audience clapping along. It's the key to freedom, Clinton said. The hours-long service at Greater Grace Temple encompassed many elements, emotions and regal entrances that were hallmarks of Franklin's more than six decades on sacred and secular stages. She was remembered as the pride of Detroit and as a citizen of the world. Music mogul Clive Davis, who helped revive Franklin's career in the 1980s, described her as a loving friend and a dedicated and unpredictable artist, whose passions ranged from soul to ballet. He remembered her turning up at a tribute to him in a tutu, dancing with most impressive agility and dignity. Ariana Grande sang one of the Queen's biggest hits, You Make Me Feel Like, A Natural Woman, and Faith Hill performed What a Friend We Have in Jesus. The Aretha Franklin Orchestra performed a medley featuring I Say a Little Prayer. Angel and other songs she was known for, along with such gospel numbers as I Love the Lord and Walk in the Light. Barbara Sampson read a statement from former President George W. Bush, saying that Franklin would continue to inspire future generations. The Reverend Al Sharpton read a statement from former President Barack Obama, who wrote that Franklin's work reflected the very best of the American story. Sharpton received loud cheers when he criticized President Donald Trump for saying that the singer worked for him as he responded to her death. She performed for you, Sharpton said of Franklin, who had sung at Trump-owned venues. She worked for us. She gave us pride. She gave us a regal bar to reach. She represented the best in our community, Sharpton said. Many noted her longtime commitment to civil rights and lasting concern for the poor. Her friend Greg Mathis, the award-winning reality show host and retired Michigan judge, recalled his last conversation with her. They talked about the tainted water supply in Flint. You go up there and sock it to him, she urged Mathis, paraphrasing the socket to me refrain from respect. 
Franklin died August 16 at age 76. Her body arrived early Friday in a 1940 Cadillac Los Al Hearse. She wore a shimmering gold dress, with sequin heels, the fourth outfit Franklin was clothed in during a week of events leading up to her funeral. The casket was carried to the church that also took Franklin's father, the renowned minister C. L. Franklin, to his and Park's final resting place at Woodlawn Cemetery, where the singer will join them. Pink Cadillacs filled the street outside the church, a reference to a Franklin hit from the 1980s, Free Way of Love. Program covers showed a young Franklin, with a slight smile and sunglasses perched on her nose, and the caption a celebration fit for the Queen. Large bouquets of pink, lavender, yellow and white flowers flanked her casket. Floral arrangements from singers such as Barbara Streisand and Tony Bennett and from the family of the late Otis Redding, whose respect Franklin transformed and made her signature song, were set up in a hallway outside the sanctuary. Detroit plans to honor one of its most famous residents. Mayor Mike Duggan announced during the service that the city would rename the Riverfront Amphitheater Shen Park to Aretha Franklin Park. Bishop Charles Ellis III of Greater Grace knows well the bold-faced guest list and surrounding pomp and circumstance, but he has a higher mission in mind. It is my goal and my aim to ensure that people leave here with some kind of spiritual awakening, Ellis said. This is not a concert, this is not a show, this is not an awards production. This is a real life that has been lived, that a person regardless of how famous she became, no matter how many people she touched around the world, she still could not escape death. Family members, among them granddaughter Victory Franklin and niece Crystal Franklin, spoke with awe and affection as they remembered a world-famous performer who also loved gossip and kept pictures of loved ones on her piano. Grandson Jordan directed his remarks directly to Franklin, frequently stopping to fight back tears. I'm sad today, because I'm losing my friend. But I know the imprint she left on this world can never be removed. You showed the world God's love, and there's nothing more honorable. What is it with all these leftists politicizing of high-profile funerals all of a sudden? It's like since the left can't beat us on ideas they have to try and beat us when we can't reply, and in the tackiest of ways. Aretha Franklin was 76 years old, for her to get sick at her age isn't something that's out of the norm. Especially if you compare the lifespan of people today to people from 100 years ago, 50 years ago, even 20 years ago. We now live longer and healthier than in any other time in human history. But like the left believes, never let a good crisis go to waste. And sadly by using funerals to do this, the left has proven how little they hold sacred, from Stevie Wonder to Jesse Jackson to Barack Hussein Obama, to Meghan McCain, their actions have been disgusting and unwarranted. Let's go back to the days when funerals were about saying goodbye to a person and political rallies were about getting a person elected into office. Don't you agree? That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click, like, and subscribe. Thank you.